Well, hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dave coming to you from the paddock here in Southern Maryland. It's probably about 2 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Um, the Freedom Friday vid is up and posted now. I need to get that done before I did this one. So this video is a religious video. It's a biblical reading video. It's going to be my thoughts on what I read this morning. If you don't want to hear about religion, GTFO, get out. Um, don't watch the rest of this video. And then maybe go reevaluate your life's priorities at the same time. Um, so anyway, I'm going to read to you. Um, and so I'm just going to, I just wanted that, I just wanted this to be right up front before you wasted any time on this video. If you're not interested in hearing about God or my interpretations of what I read today, please stop watching the video now. Just go watch. Go watch a pipe channel, go watch a tobacco channel, go watch a kitten channel. I don't really care. Just don't bitch at me that I put up a religious video. I'm warning you up front. That's all this is going to be. There's no redeeming qualities beyond me talking about the Word of God today. This is a dangerous video for me to make. I have no qualifications to make this video. I probably shouldn't make this video. Um, I'm not a biblical scholar. Uh, but let's talk about why I'm choosing to anyway, okay? So I've told you in prior videos, this is my third time through the Bible. So um, I try to I read it. I have an annual reading plan. Here, I've shown this to you in the past. And uh, this is it for my third one, by the way. I'm, you can see I'm cruising through it. The scriptures version I'm reading is organized differently than the Bible I know. It's not organized like the King James or the the New American Standard Bible, which are the two I've already read. So I'm kind of jumping around, but you can kind of see I am. Uh, my goal is to read the Bible, read the scriptures version in six months, and I am uh, on March 27th. I am going to be three months in, and I will be halfway through this. So. I'm currently reading Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel. And today I was reading my my dual reading assignment because I'm trying to read two a day, so I do it in six months instead of a year. My reading today was from Ezekiel chapters five through eight, and then Ezekiel chapters nine through twelve. So the all the reading I'm going to do for you or do to you <laughs> is comes from those chapters, Ezekiel five through eight. Ezekiel 9 through 12. And I am going to read a fair amount of the Bible to you today. So one of my firm core beliefs in life is that that voice inside our head, when we are quiet and centered, the voice in our head isn't just some random voice in our head. I believe it is the voice of inspiration. It is the word of God, the voice of God. I don't know how you want to word it. Word it any way you want, right? the voice of spirit, uh, the voice of infinite intelligence, the voice of the universe, whatever you want to call it so it's not offensive. But to me, the, the basis for inspiration is that, that, that flash of brilliance in us um, is not random. And it happened to me today while I was reading. Because I'm really quiet. It's early in the morning. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. It's pitch dark outside. The dogs have had their breakfast. They're laying next to me asleep. The wife is still in bed asleep. I mean, it is dead, quiet, and calm when I'm doing this. And I'm generally pretty quiet and centered in the morning. And while reading it today, I mean, as clear as day, it just flashed in my head, do a vid about this, right? So that's why I'm doing it. It's the only reason I'm doing this is because it flashed into me, do a video today about what you're reading. And that's what this is. I also want to disclaimer that says, I don't know where I'm going. As I get into this, <clears throat> I've laid out the passages I'm going to read to you. I've laid them out in the order of which I'm going to read them. And I have a belief and a conclusion from it, but I have no idea where I'm going with this video other than I was told to do it. So we got to set the stage. We've got to give some reference points because I'm diving into the middle of a book and the book is in the middle of the Bible. So at this point in the Bible, we've gone through the five books of the Torah. God has taught us how to create the church. He's taught us how he wants us to 
have a relationship with him. He's talked, um, he's written the book of Moses, right? He's written the law of Moses, right? Which is how we are supposed to create the church, worship God, have a relationship with him, and how to behave in our daily lives in such a fashion that we can have a relationship with God, all right? Now, at this point, in the, now we've come through all that, and now this is God's third attempt at sending a prophet to the countries, uh, the kingdoms of, of Israel and Judah. So back, in the, back before the prophets, the, the kingdom of Israel was split in half under, after King Solomon ruled. And we had the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. And they never got back together. At least that's my understanding. Now, again, I'm no biblical scholar, but I'm, no, I'm certainly no champion of history of that time, that's for sure. But from then on, the Bible always talks about the two kingdoms. And at this point, they have misbehaved so badly under so many kings that God sends first, um, hang on a second, Jeremiah. He first sends Isaiah. And, and as Isaiah was, went out and preached the, preached the prophecy he was given, which was, get your shit together or I'm going to burn these kingdoms to the ground. Well, that didn't work. So then he sent Jeremiah. And Jeremiah did the same thing. He preached the prophecy of you've got to get back in line with the word of God or God's going to burn this stuff to the ground. That didn't work. And so version three comes out, Ezekiel, right? This is uh, If this was Hollywood, this would be Wrath of God part three, you know, like Jaws part three. This time it's personal. So what I'm going to read to you is, is God has appeared to Ezekiel twice, actually, in two different visions and has spoken to him. And, and let me just show you. So this, so I guess, first of all, this is the, this is the version I'm reading in the Bible, the scriptures, okay? And you can see I highlight the highlighted phrases. Those, that's actually the word of God. This is God actually speaking to Ezekiel. And that, that's what I want to read to you today is what he actually says to Ezekiel. Now, why am I doing this? I'm going to finish this video with why I think it was flashed to me today. I guess I'll say, I'm just going to read it verbatim. I'm not going to try to translate the words. So you're going to hear, you're going to hear the scriptures versions of words for God. It's Yah. Uh, for Israel, it's Israel. And um, so there's just stuff like that, but I'm going to read it verbatim. because I just don't have the brain power to do the immediate translations. I'm going to be too, a little bit too nervous uh, about reading to you. I'm nervous about making this video, so I'm not going to try to translate. I'm just going to read to you. All right, so let's go to work. There are four readings I'm going to do for you today, or do to you today, depending on how you feel about this. So the first one, part A, uh, it's the first of four. I'm reading to you from Ezekiel chapter 5. I'm reading verses 5 through 17 for you. And that's what this is. Thus said the Master Yah, This is Jerusalem, which I have set in the midst of the nations with the other lands all around her. But she rebelled against my right rulings, doing wrong more than the nations, and my laws more than lands all around her. For they have rejected my right rulings, and they have not walked in my laws. Therefore, thus said the Master Yah, because you have rebelled more than the nations all around you, and have not walked in my laws, nor done my right rulings, nor even done according to the right rulings of the nations all around you. Therefore, thus the Master Yah, uh, look, I myself am against you, and shall execute judgments in your midst before the eyes of nations. And I shall do among you what I have never done, and the like of which I never do again, because all of you are abominations. Therefore, fathers are going to eat their sons in your midst, and sons eat their fathers. And I shall execute judgments among you and scatter all your remnant to all the winds. Therefore, as I live, declares the Master Yah, because you have defiled my set-apart place with all your disgusting matters and with all your abominations, therefore I also withdraw, and my eye shall not pardon, nor shall I spare. One third of you shall die of pestilence, and be consumed with scarcity of food in your midst, 
and one third shall fall by the sword all around you. And I shall scatter another third to all the winds and draw out a sword after them. And my displeasure shall be completed, and I shall bring my wrath to rest upon them, and I shall be eased. And they shall know that I am Yah, have spoken it in my wrath ardor, when I have completed my wrath upon them. And I shall make you a waste and a reproach among the nations that are all around you before the eyes of all who pass by. And it shall be a reproach, an object of scorn, a warning, and an astonishment to the nations that are all around you when I execute judgments among you in displeasure and in wrath and in heated chastisements. I, Yah, have spoken. When I send against them the evil arrows of scarcity of food, which shall be for their destruction, which I send to destroy you, I shall increase the scarcity of food upon you and cut off your supply of bread. And I shall send against you scarcity of food and evil beasts, and they shall bereave you. And pestilence and blood shall pass through you while I bring the sword against you. I, Yah, have spoken. Okay, my second reading is from Ezekiel chapter 6, verses 19 through 27. They will throw their silver into the streets, and their gold becomes as filth. Their silver and their gold is unable to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yah. They do not satisfy their appetite nor fill their stomachs, because it has been their stumbling, stumbling block of crookedness. And the splendor of his ornaments he set in excellency, but they made from it the images of their abominations and their disgusting matters. Therefore, I shall make it like filth to them. And I shall give it for a prey into the hands of strangers and to the wrong of the earth for a spoil, and they shall profane it. This is verse 22. And I shall turn my face from them. And they shall profane my secret place, for destroyer shall enter it and profane it. Make a chain, for the land has been filled with crimes of blood, and the city has been filled with violence. And I shall bring the evil ones of the nations, and they shall possess their houses. And I shall cause the pride of the strong to cease, and their set-apart places shall be profane. Destruction shall come, and they shall seek peace, but there is none. Calamity upon calamity shall come, and report shall be upon report. And they shall seek a vision from a prophet, but the teaching has perished from the priest, and counsel from the elders. Let the sovereign mourn, and let the prince put on despair, and let the hands of the common people tremble. And I shall deal with them according to their way, and judge them with their own right rulings, and they shall know that I am Yah. All right, guys, the third ruling, uh, third ruling, the third reading is going to be from Ezekiel chapter 9. It's, it's actually all of chapter 9. There's 10 verses or 11 verses in it. And he called out in my hearing with a loud voice saying, let the punishers of the city draw near, each with his weapon of destruction in his hand. So he's talking to the cherubims that he's sending in to do the destruction. And look, Six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with his battle axe in hand. And one man in their midst was clothed with linen and had a rider's inkhorn at his side. And they came in and stood beside the bronze slaughter place. And the esteem of the Elohim of Yisrael went up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And Yah said to him, Pass on into the midst of the city, into the midst of Jerusalem, and you shall put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within. So he's sending somebody to go in, an angel, a cherub, to go in and mark the people who don't support what is happening in the world today. And to the others, he said, in my hearing, pass on into the city after him and strike. Do not let your eye pardon nor spare. 
kill to destruction old, young men, maidens and children and women, but do not come near anyone upon whom is the mark and begin at my set-apart place. So they began with the elders who were in the front of the house. And he said to them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. And they went out and struck in the city. And as they were striking them, it came to be that I alone was left. And I fell on my face and cried out and said, Ah, Master Yah, are you destroying all the remnant of Israel in pouring out your wrath on Jerusalem? And he said to me, The crookedness of the house of Israel in Yehuda is exceedingly great, and the land is filled with bloodshed, and the city filled with that which is warped. For they say, Yah has forsaken the land, and Yah is not seeing. But as for me, my eye shall not pardon, nor would I spare. I shall recompense their deeds on their own head. And see the man clothed with linen, who has the inkhorn at his side, reported back and said, I have done as you commanded me. All right, guys, we've done three. We've got one more reading to do. So remember, this is God talking to Ezekiel in his vision. So again, these are the direct words of God to him. I am reading, the last reading is chapter 12, verses 2 through 5, and then 16 on. So I'll, I'll clear that up in a minute. Son of man, you are dwelling in the midst of a rebellious home. They have eyes to see, but they have not seen. They have ears to hear, but they have not heard, for they are a rebellious house. Therefore, son of man, prepare your baggage for exile and go into exile by day before their eyes. And you shall go from your place into exile to another place before their eyes. It could be that they see, though they are a rebellious house. And you shall bring out your baggage for exile before their eyes by day and at evening go before their eyes like those who go into exile. Dig through the wall before their eyes and you shall bring them out through it. Take them on your shoulders and bring them out at dark before their eyes. Cover your face so that you do not see the land, for I have made you a sign to the house of Israel. Son of man, did not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, say to you, What are you doing? Say to them, This, said the master Yah, This message is to bring the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel who are in their midst. Say, I am a sign to you, uh, as I have done. So as is done to them, they are to go into exile, into captivity. And they shall know that I am Yah when I scatter them among the nations, and I shall disperse them throughout the lands. But I shall let a few of their men escape from the sword, from the scarcity of food, and from pestilence, so that they recount all their abominations among the nations wherever they go, and they shall know that I am Yah. So he's essentially saying, I'm going to let a few go so that, you know, um, so that people can recount what was done and why it was done to future generations. So where was I going with all that? What, what was going through my mind? And, you know, what, why did I agree to do this video? And I think... It's my conclusion that we, particularly those of us in the United States, but I'll open it up to the, the wider Western world because I think we're all in the same boat, and many of you who watch me aren't in the U.S., but I'll add Canada and most of the European countries right squarely in the middle of this. I think the world that we live in, I'm in particular addressing the United States, is doing what Israel and Judah did back in those times. I believe we are actively turning away from God as a society and as countries. You know, I know those who watch, if you're still watching this, you probably don't fit into that category, but you fit into the category of someone who's sitting in disbelief, watching your country, your government, your society, your neighbors, your family turn away from God, not live the laws that God handed down, not living the way he's asked us to live, um, not following his guidance. Um, and I think there's ramifications to that beyond that we get angry. I, I think there's ramifications that God is probably past tense, turned his face from the United States, 
turned his face from the Western world and said, hey, you, you got on your own. And I think if we continue down this road, what he says to Ezekiel, he will eventually say to our countries that if we don't get right, he will burn us down. He will make us wastelands. Will it be a nuclear war? I don't know. I have no idea. This is the part where I'm totally free cycling, freewheeling. I have no idea where I'm going with this. I just, I had that flash. I read it this morning. I said, holy crap, this is today's world. Um, I think we are headed straight down the path of Israel several couple thousand years ago. Not sure where else to go with this, so I'm going to stop for a minute. So we'll take a break for a minute. I'm smoking. This is Ethan's, one of his top five Missouri Meerschaum pipes, the Acorn. And uh, Missouri Meerschaum actually sent this stem with it. It's, um, it's not a Vermont freehand forever stem, but it's close. It's pretty close. Anyway, it's a nice pipe. And really, for the fourth day in a row, I'm doing Dark Fired Cherry. I'm kind of stuck on it right now. I absolutely love that blend. I mean, it is it's probably top five or top four at this point. It tastes amazing. It burns great. When you get about 10 or 20% into the bowl, it just takes on this flavor pretty much right to the bottom of the bowl. It just tastes so good and smokes so well. I probably should put a banner up here like intermission, right? I'm just taking a break from the seriousness for a minute. A little late, but thank you, Greg. So Missouri Meerschaum Acorn with Dark Fired Cherry. It's a Ken Byron. Absolutely fabulous. I love it. All right, guys. I just assembled all the pieces. We're sitting at about 22, 23 minutes, so it's not too bad. It's not... Not too long, but we'll take a minute and wrap this up, and uh, I'll get the video uploaded. So, guys, this is an example of, you know, in, in some of my videos, I just plead, read the Bible. Read it yourself, not in church, not with someone else, not in Bible study. I mean, do those things, too. I'm not saying stop that, please. But I'm saying read the Bible. Pick the book up and read it without any interpretation, without any um, learning assistance or interpretation assistance. Read the Bible. Then go get all the interpretation you want. Get all the teachings you want. Get all the classes you want. But read the damn Bible without anyone influencing you. Go to the source. Go to the document. Read the words that God put in here. All right? It's very clear when God is speaking. It's very clear in here. When Christ is speaking, it's very clear in here. Now, the words need interpretation, some historically, some culturally, and some just need referential points. I get that. But I think we're much better people when we've read the document ourselves. So it's weird. I am, I'm, I am of two minds uh, of other opinions. One, I couldn't care less what other people think about what I just read. And I, I can't wait to hear how other people interpret this and put different references and different um, interpretations on it. So I can't wait to hear what Potter Piper has to say about it. And I couldn't care less what Potter Piper. I, I'm, I'm both, right? I want to hear what people like Potter Piper have to say. He is way more qualified to talk about like this. And I have my own beliefs and intentions um, and interpretations of the word as I read it directly. So I, I'll end this video with, Please read the Bible. Please. You know, find a way to spend 10 or 15 minutes a day reading the Bible. At, at about 15 minutes a day, it'll take you a year to get through it. If you have any need for it, I'll send you the, the, the annual reading plan. It gives you, down to the chapter and verse, what you need to do to get through the Bible in a year. It might change how you think. 
Um, it will certainly change what you hear. It will change what you think about what other people say about the Bible. If you go to church, what church tells you about the Bible. If other channels give you input about what the Bible says, at least you have the foundation of having read it yourself. Um, gosh, I think that's it. Um, thanks for putting up with me. And that's it. We're um, Amory and I are headed to dinner tonight. We got a dinner date with another couple that we've known for 25 years. It's one of these couples that we're really close to, but we don't see that often. So we're heading up to uh, Old Town Annapolis for dinner tonight. So uh, this will be it for the channel for the day. Thank God. Right. Um, and we will talk again tomorrow on Saturday, everybody. Bye now.